Homelessness is a widespread epidemic. Signs keep reading, keep the change, have been appearing in windows of businesses throughout Milwaukee, advising patrons not to give money to the panhandlers. The flyers are a result of the Keep the Change initiative that was adopted by the Milwaukee Common Council on March 1, 2016. The city takes a stance against panhandling in urban Milwaukee. I'm Sharon Patterson, and today with me is Bianca Williams, founder of the organization A Cry for Help. Thank you for being here, Bianca. Thank you. Now, we're going to watch a patch uh, package on the homeless conspiracy theory, and afterwards we'll discuss the effects of homelessness and panhandlers with our guest. I've been homeless, but never without a home. About a week after I turned 19, my mom passed away. She died of bone cancer on December 6, 1977 at Mount Sinai Hospital. I remember how cold it was, cold in a lot of ways. I wondered, who would take care of us? Where would we live? I had four siblings younger than me, from 11 years old to 17, not to mention a niece who was on the run from her mom and stepdad, who was staying with us too. So there's way more to my story than what meets the eye. My story idea came about while driving with my husband of 33 years. I saw so many homeless folks on street corners begging for money. I thought about my own past. I said to my husband, what if this was staged and all these people really didn't need our money and were just getting rich through some sort of organized scheme? I took a script writing class as part of my college TV program. I pitched my story idea to Mr. Tony, my instructor. I guess you could say the rest is history as you see what unfolds through this short story. We got some strange things going on in your city. We right? sure do, that's Wisconsin for you. <laughs> All right, and we have you checking in today. How many nights? Probably for more than I uh, originally intended. I gotta check out your city some more first. <laughs> gotcha. We have you all set. There's your room key. You'll just be right up the ramp over there. This way? Yes, all sir. Right. All right, thank you. Hey man, I'm in Milwaukee right now. I got this crazy new idea I need you to help with me, help me with, all right? Um, I want you to recruit, recruit some workers for me, and I'm thinking of hiring three thugs. Uh, three of them need to be uh, uh, black males, I'm thinking, between the ages of 28 and 39, let's say, and they need to be willing to make real money, okay? They need to work their butts off to make real money, because real money's real deal here. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call me back, but um, that's what's going on. So start recruiting, start hiring, and uh, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Thank you. Um, let me ask you something really quick. Uh, that, that woman out there, does she, does she stand out there that much? 
every day. Really? Yes. Some some people say she, you know, lost her memory from some tragic thing that happened in her life. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. She looks so familiar, right? You're not going to believe this, but um, it sounds crazy, actually. But I think that's my sister. But I thought she was dead. Is that all? Uh, I'm sorry, yes, that's that's it for right now. Thanks. Okay. So with the right kind of people involved, this could actually work. Home's here. Hey, man. Great to hear your voice again. So I hear you're looking for a, a new business idea, huh? Man, it sounds great, but I'm not sure if you can pull this off. It sounds risky, but I know you do what you say. Hey, don't worry about those other two men. I know exactly who to bring in. I'm in, so when's the meeting? I already called my executive assistant and, uh, well, he recruited the two men we need, all right? Man, can't wait to bring the team together. All right. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> you got this new business deal mm -hmm. and I want to hear all about this new venture. Who told you? You know your wife can't keep nothing. Mm -hmm. I want in. Yeah, we really need to get these bills taken care of. Well, well, well. So, um, I just talked to my friend Gary like I stated before. Um, this is very new. Um, we're gonna try to take a stab at it. I don't know how well it will work. Once I get all the details in, maybe. Um, 
Let me finish talking to him, getting things all panned out. Let me look at over the blueprints and everything of this deal, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll get back to you. Okay, we definitely want to get kept in a loop because she's not my friend. She's family. I'm family, and she told me all about it. But I just wanted to know more details about how did you get this going? What, what made you think about this? Well, I don't know too many details. I was kind of under the influence. I was going to need two more people or whatnot, but supposedly he has that taken care of. But if there's anything I could do as far as pulling you guys in, mm -hmm. that's not a problem. I'll definitely bring in, keep you in the loop. Of, you know. Okay, Crazy. how soon How soon will we have information? Because these bills need to get paid. How soon we have information? Is that all you worry about? The bills being paid. That's it. Well, we do need this money. Pounds. You do need this money. What's yours is ours. It's not just your money. Okay, well, don't take too much time because these bills have to get paid. Gary, let him produce more finalized information to me and I'll let you know where it goes from there. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. It's showtime. I hope you guys are ready. Just a few quick notes before we begin. First off, it's crucial that you understand our goals for this business. Okay, what we expect here and what we're going to do with this, all right? And I have recruited some of the top guys over the years. Indeed you have. And this time, I have recruited the top leader that will take you on the street and show you the process of how it's done. Man, I don't know. What makes you think this is going to work, man? Somebody could go to jail. Someone could get rich. Regardless, the vision is clear. In fact, you know what, Boswell, why don't you just talk about it some more and Thank you, Gary. share your information, Thank all right? Thank you so much. Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> Street panhandling is nothing new. It was, in every, it was every occupation for every immigrant long before us. It started in the 8th. 1970s to the late 1900s. They would set up travel lines and trolley lines all through the town. Basically immigrants, Jewish, Italian, blacks, whites. It's in every culture. What we want to do is bring this to a bigger, a bigger, broader era where we take these panhandling skills and put them into a bigger package. So it's just going to be us doing this? Like, where's James? Wasn't he supposed to be here? Well, it's only three of us. Uh, um, you know what? James is still thinking about it. He's he's not sure what he wants to do yet. So he's, I don't know, I'll, I'll I'll check in with him later. I'll see what he wants to do. But right now he's on the fence about it. Today we have a new vision and a new purpose, gentlemen, and that is to build an empire within fifty states and well abroad. We will place you guys in strategic locations around the city, and we'll watch this thing unfold. Here's some brief information, gentlemen. All right, so this is the container of our clothes that we get to choose from, all right? So we can select whatever we want to wear. So let's, uh, every location, every week, we'll have a change of different clothes. What we'll do here is rotate the outfits if we need to. Make use of what we got. The more of a homeless person you look like, the more earnings you should make. Yeah. I'm too clean to be in this, man. Oh, you'll be all right.
today, fellas. We took you guys out, let you observe the scene uh, of the location where you'd be uh, standing at. You've seen the potential of it. You guys got to see what it takes. So pretty much you guys just were introduced to the largest business since crack cocaine. Well, fellas, we broke even at $5,000, so the record is set. Moving forward, whoever gets the highest quarter of the day gets a free weekend stay in Vegas. <laughs> so, like the mods. Yeah, they pretty dope odds, man. Okay, okay. Well, ten thousand dollars is the market for the day. You know, keep your hands out all day. You know, that's all I ask. You know, when they walking by, hands out, fellas. Okay. So what I want to know is, how do I get my own? You know, how much I got to put down to get my own group? You feel me? <laughs> Let's say if I want to have my own part in this, you know, how much I got to put down. Just, just press it easy. Just, just calm down. You know, you, you'll get your chance to be maybe a partner. You know what I mean? We we'll, might make you a partner. We'll just see how things go. You know, we're just getting started. We, we do expect to expand. You know that. You know, so we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. But as of right now, just you know, take a little breather. Let's get out here and try to reach the ten thousand dollars today. How about that one? I got my money, my man here. So who's gonna win that package today? Man, oh hell no, nah, man. Let me tell you something. Here we go. I got my game face on. You know. Okay. All that money that you just said, 10000 is going straight to my bank, okay? My wallet. <laughs> okay. Straight everything. We'll, we'll, we'll start with the free weekend in Vegas, you know. We'll, <laughs> we'll bring the money into the hole, and then we'll we'll go from there, okay, fellas? All um, right. I like your outfit, too, so I think my man got a little head start on you right there. Calvin Klein, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's each his own, you know. We know what it could Ooh be. Wee. You know what it could be. You know what it could be. You know what it could be, but as far as Boswell Enterprises go, we're gonna go ahead and take this, fellas. She is? What? Is she alive? She's still alive. She's badly bruised, but she lives. So where is she? Do you know? Well, welcome back. Uh, after seeing the program, the prepackaged piece, we're going to be with our guests to talk about some questions in a moment. So let's get right into it. Um, before I go into talking to you about what happened in the video segment, I'd like to find out from you what your organization, A Cry for Help, is all about. So Cry for Help started about three and a half years ago. We basically go out into the community, feeding the homeless, clothing them, providing hygiene products, doctor's appointment, medication reminders, different things like that. Okay, so what was it that got you involved in working with the homeless? So I had a lot of family members and friends that was homeless and I was trying to figure out like why get to the root problem and I also was homeless for a few years myself. You were homeless? Yes. Okay, how did that come about? Um, it came about where my mother fell on hard times and she wasn't able to keep a stable environment or home and we was going house to house. I just decided to leave and go with families and friends and a few teachers took me in at one point in time. Okay, so you have first-hand knowledge of this, mm -hmm. and that's what got you involved in, in founding the organization. Yes. All right. Let's talk about what we saw in the segment. There, there were a group of people who talked about the fact that they mm -hmm. wanted to sort of fake panhandling. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there, and I, I probably said it in my lifetime too, do they really need mm -hmm. some assistance? 
what is your view on panhandling? Panhandling today is really different. They strategic. They uh, be in these places where it's known that it's a high traffic area, mm -hmm. a high uh, foot area where people walking through all day, all the time with a lot of visibility. And they decide to go to these places to stand out there and get money is what they call it. Mm -hmm. Getting money is stand out there and beg for a few hours and get some money for doing so. So given that, did the, did the city council have the right uh, take on it by saying that they're going to stop this and say don't give the change anymore? I don't think they have the right. I think every person have a different situation. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are actually homeless. Mm -hmm. There are some people out there that say, hey, I don't have nothing else. This is my last resort. Why is it the last resort? I mean, we have homeless shelters. Uh, we have employment offices, mm -hmm. you know, temporary services. Mm -hmm. So why does panhandling become the end all? Because a lot of people don't have the basic necessities or things or tools that they need to go to these places like ID, social security cards, birth certificates, and then again it's pride. Mm. I believe pride keeps a lot of people from going into these type of resources. So panhandling then becomes their job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. How do you tell the diff the group that you work with? Mm -hmm. They're in need, correct? Yes. So how does one tell the difference between those who are really in need and those who are, like the piece talked about, just trying to get some money, some extra money on the side? It's really hard to say who's really in need and who's not because everybody got a good game today. Mm -hmm. Everybody just, you know, they look at it, they make it feel like, hey, I am really in need and all along we can begin play, but we really don't know whether they need or they not until we actually in a situation and sit them down and speak one-on-one -on -one with them. Now you talked about uh, earlier we were talking and you said that there were a lot of children that are involved in this type of, of situation. Can you elaborate on that at all? Yes, due to a lot of parents falling on bad terms right now mm -hmm. and without jobs and steady income coming in, a lot of younger youth are falling victims to homelessness at a really young age today, as early as 13 and 14 years old. And so in your organization, you're seeing these kids out mm -hmm. on the street? Yes, they out on the streets, they begging, and a lot of them, sometimes if we don't get them close enough before they get involved in other things, they become victims to trafficking, and human trafficking, to drug game, prostitution, and other things. How prevalent is that? Very prevalent like it's happening all the time, every day. Hmm. So aside from the children, there are a lot of adults that are out there mm -hmm. as well. What do you say to the people who, who say, if you can stand there, uh, I'll give you an example, there was someone, I was coming out of church once and she went up to him and she said, you're here every day at, mm -hmm. you know, at 11 o'clock when we're coming mm -hmm. out, if you can get here at 11 o'clock every day, can't you also go to a job every day and do that? Well, I would say is everyone have different situations. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that, hey, don't give them anything. I would say, hey, pull that person to the side, ask them what's really going on. See what real help that they do need mm -hmm. because you don't know that person may have a situation where they get abused mm -hmm. and they just run away from a situation. You never know, they may not have no food at home and then that job becomes, hey, every day or every Sunday at 11 o'clock I'm gonna go here because somebody's gonna help me. Okay, so would you suggest that the average person that sees this on the street um, take them aside and do that or would you suggest that they then direct them to a, some sort of counseling or homeless shelter? Yes, I would say direct them to some resources, some reliable resources that mm -hmm. they can use and say, hey, I know a place over here that gives you free food, free clothing, free hygiene. So you don't have to directly give them something out of your pocket, mm -hmm. but you're still giving them something that they can use. Hmm. A lot of times, um, the majority of people think about the homeless population when it's um, Christmas or Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or et cetera. Where are some of the resources that people can go to, and not just during the holidays, but all year round? 
um, the Salvation Army, um, Temp Services. It's a lot of organizations that's on the ground that's doing work. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Thank you so much, Bianca, for being with us today. Um, as you can see, being homeless is not a crime, but it is an issue in Milwaukee. So let's do something, get some coaching. It can be resolved with coaching, awareness, and resources. I'm Sharon Patterson. Thank you for joining us.